So, what we have been discussing is that in today's world, while the customer sees a large hotel, a global hotel chain. So, like Hyatt or Holiday Inn or Marriott and the customer expects that a certain level of uh, service level, a certain excellence in customer endearment, a certain level of operational efficiency, value for money, a certain level of distinctiveness will be available from this global hotel chain. But this customer's array of expectations will be met by not a monolithic entity, but what we have called a service ecosystem. That means, this global hotel chain will be actually a combination of number of different types of service provider or service centers or service entities. Some of them may be owned by this hotel chain and many of them may not be owned by this hotel chain, but they will be part of this constellation. So, there will be service BPOs, business process outsourcing expert companies who together in a seamless combination will meet this customer's array of expectation. And this constellation formation or network formation we discussed in the last session originally was driven by cost arbitrage, labor arbitrage reasons. It then moved to the era of developing process excellence and giving value to those partners who could bring superior expertise to the play. But we discussed in the last session that we are now at an inflection point where these experts using today's technologies can create a new level of service excellence and can perhaps create new types of services which we had not seen before. So, today's session we are going to focus on how the service ecosystem and networking of services lead to service innovation. So, we have these services, I have chosen four, eBay, Air Asia, Flipkart, Ghana. Not all of them are using a first time model, not all of them are the lead innovators. Some of them are like eBay, they created this entire online auction as a new method of payment and as a new method of a new type of commerce which is often called C to C, customer to customer. So, eBay provides a platform which allows one class of customers to deal with another customer class of customers to do commerce, which in a very modern way has brought about a certain version of the old barter economy. So, there are many types of obscure highly specialized items. Today, the commerce in those items have now become global because of this unique 
service platform that has been created by eBay. Similarly, Air Asia has created a new way of flying that is of course, based on not only low cost, but different other things like a spread of network to many relatively unknown places, opening up whole countries to the benefits of tourism and various other things. Flipkart in India, which is to an extent using the model created by companies like Amazon, but they you know, did some simple innovation like cash on delivery, sensing that the many Indian customers were not participating in e-commerce because either they did not have credit cards or they were not very comfortable to use credit cards, debit cards on the net. So, the cash on delivery has now become almost an industry standard, but when first introduced by some companies, one of them a leader Flipkart created a new paradigm opened up the market to a large number of uh, customers and generally contributed to this big boom that we see now in the area of e retailing in India or Ghana. Kind of model same as what Apple introduced with iTunes, but this is a new way of buying or enjoying music, maybe even not buying, but basically consumption of music in a new way. So, what we are saying is that the service networking and outsourcing or constellation of service providers together working in front of the customer has led to rapid reduction of operational costs. These are the expected gains that drove, but this has already happened. This is happening right in front of us. The ability to transform fixed cost into variable cost which we discussed in the last session, the ability to focus on core competencies and access, this is the most important part, access in each case the leading competency and expertise. So, what we are now seeing is therefore, not a constellation or network or ecosystem of the lowest cost provider, but an ecosystem of the best experts at the lowest cost. So, this is creating an unbeatable combination. It is in conformity with this broader classification of services where we see business to business services traditional, knowledge intensive business services, business to business services. These are like management consultancy, IT consultancy etcetera, business to business traditional domain accountancy, legal advice, training etcetera, consumer services, shops, hotels, banking personal care, beauty care. Some of them are internal, some are public services, some are not for profit services. These are all the different types of services that we have been discussing in this course right from the beginning, but the purpose of putting this again in front of you is to highlight that all these domains are now open to service networks and service ecosystems. So, even very high end knowledge intensive business services, while for management consultancy may retain certain centers of expertise within the organization but quite likely may actually set up a separate knowledge center, which will provide fundamentally the IT part of that organization. So, the concept of 
networking, service ecosystem development based on best expertise at lowest cost. We will generate complete new generations of services. So, technology will become the most significant enabler of this new generation of service. So, we will see services like eBay or policybazaar.com. You know, this is a unique comparative service of insurance. So, a people can buy insurance today not under the influence of yesteryear's um, insurance agents who would have actually put you under a high pressure selling tactics. But today the customer will make his or her own decision based on an extensive comparative value research presented to you, presented to him or her at the click of a button. Or we will have services like eBay, which is as I was just now discussing created a new class of commerce, which is consumer to consumer or customer to customer commerce. And they themselves are not actually a monolithic service. They are also a network of services including PayPal, Skype, which are providing very important part of their overall service package, but they are different service excellence centers. They might have been acquired or part of the same ownership structure, but the key point is operationally they are actually coming together of different expertise centers. So, this is the chart in front of you. So, eBay industry sector is online auction, new service, new business model is a new way of buying and selling through a community of individual users or what we just now called C 2 C. Air Asia a new way of consuming air travel with no frill service and emphasis on economy. Flipkart is an e retailer or e tailor as they are called new way to buy goods or different other kinds of all kinds of goods today. Um, or iTune a music retailer, new way of buying and downloading music or Google the internet search engine. I have now included here a name with two question marks. The name is Food Panda and your assignment is to understand the working of this company. You might be already familiar with this company because they are now heavily advertising on all kinds of electronic media. But what I would like you to do is to identify that how would you put, where would you put in food panda on the industry sector map? What will be their industry sector? In that itself perhaps you are, you will discover that in the service in industry new sectors are emerging because of this technology and service interplay. And I would also like you to describe that just like in case of eBay under this description, this new service, new business model we have put a new way of buying and selling through a community of individual users. How would you describe the new service, new business model of food panda? So, these are two gaps in this chart that you have to fill and that is your assignment. So, you remember that we had used earlier unsoft matrix which is existing product or existing service and new service and existing customers and new customers. 
So, that same uh, classification now applies, but we are now recognizing that many times this innovation can be internal process driven and mostly these are the ones which are very amenable to network advantages. So, Amazon if you study is a company which is a company, but it is actually mastering a huge network across the globe of suppliers with a huge network of customers. So, their business model is in this ability to connect many to many. This is the business model and that business model is today adding new dimensions to this way of classifying innovation or new service. So, services today therefore, are getting molecularized which I mentioned in the previous session and they are getting all interconnected to the consumer in front. They may be a lovely neat package, but internally it is just like a watch internally has many mechanisms all working together. Similarly, a service may be externally one entity in front of you, but internally a plethora of services which are networked together. Customer had a role in new product development as a co-creator as user, but in service customer is part of the process. This we have discussed earlier, but I am just bringing it again in front of you that right from the blueprinting, which is in understanding the service delivery process to real time market research walk the path direct contact facilitate dialogue. So, right from the idea stage or planning stage to the final delivery and sensing the quality of delivery along with the customer, we can create many interesting new um, services. For example, this uh, wedding, I would like you to study Indian wedding, traditional Indian wedding and how earlier it used to be number of small service providers coming and supplying different types of services, whether it is catering service, whether it is <coughs> flower arrangement service, whether it is uh, music service, whether it is uh, the religious uh, service, different service providers providing different elements of the service. But today, there are a number of even movies I think on the subject like that band baja barat or whatever was the name of that movie. You will see how they are not actually operating today a good Indian wedding today not does not happen as uh, a uh, number of individual service providers working together 
but it, it happens more like a service ecosystem. I think what we have been discussing a service ecosystem can be of course understood by studying eBay or Apple, iTunes, but I think it can also be understood very well by studying today's big fat Indian wedding and how they bring different service providers together who synchronize and deliver a quite intangible, but quite enjoyable package of service. And it will be nice if you share your opinion on this, the statement that I am making that we can study a traditional Indian wedding and understand the emergence of service ecosystem, which will create new dimensions of service excellence in today's world. Thank you. <laughs>